There's a great library in Belfast, one of the great cultural resources of Ireland, actually, the Lynn Hall Library. It's a wonderful, wonderful library. Uh, established with uh, uh, a clear Enlightenment uh, agenda um, to inform and uh, be an archive like this wonderful uh, archive here in UCD. Uh, the material, the books, the manuscripts, the memorabilia of a society with it, within which it functions. It's like a kind of uh, a, a, a memory of the culture of Northern Ireland, um, but it goes right back to you know the 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th centuries. Wonderful, wonderful resource. Anyway, uh, some years back, they were celebrating an anniversary. I'm not quite sure what it was at the 200th anniversary of the library. And they asked various poets to um, pick an image from the archive of the Lindenhall Library and to write a poem from uh, this image. Uh, they had the, in an old-fashioned album of photographs, photographs of all kinds of everything. Uh, inside factories, landscapes, uh, men and women at work, um, all kinds of everything. So when the uh, album arrived at my doorstep, uh, I was flicking through it with one of the uh, curator of, of this project, uh, and I saw an image, and it was an image that uh, I said, this is the image I want to write about, no, no, no other. And he said, the curator said, well, you can hold on to this album for as long as you like. Uh, there's no rush. Uh, I said, no, this is the one I want. So I, I took the image and he went off and went, met the, the next writer or poet who, who was on his list. So I pinned this image on, on to my workroom, my work uh, above my, my desk, and it sat there for weeks and weeks and weeks became months and then finally I got a phone call saying we're ready to go, uh, where's the poem? And of course then panic set in and I thought to myself, what am I going to do? The photograph was uh, a very, very simple, almost mundane image of uh, a mother and a man and woman with their children. And I, if you turn around the back of the photograph, there was the uh, subtitle Emigrant family leaving Derry, 1930s. So this was a, a very classic archetypal image of uh, Irish uh, social life. Uh, my own family, going back through generations, had left Belfast. They'd arrived here uh, back in the late 17th, 30th, 18th century uh, as immigrants. That flow, that endless movement of people um, uh, but there was something, there was something humane and expectant and uncertain about the image, which I couldn't quite get to. Uh, I was looking at the photograph when, in fact, what I should have been doing was walking metaphorically behind it and looking out through their eyes. And when I got that in place, that opened the door to the poem. And the poem was written in the woman's voice. And I imagine her as having kept the photograph, or the picture as I call it, in the poem, and placed it on mantelpieces of different homes and houses that she had gone to with her family over the years. This family, I suspect, were emigrating to America. And in the 1930s, that really was an emigration. Uh, you wouldn't be coming back. Um, they, were, they seemed quite young, but it was hard to tell. So I wrote this poem, and it is connected into other poems where I, I sort of dramatize or think about um, the lives of Im immigrants, refugees, uh, uh, in, in, in books that I published in the 1990s, like The Morning Train uh, or Lake Geneva, uh, or indeed Points West. Um, but this was a, it was a very tender poem for me to get to. And um, I think it's pretty straightforward what it's trying to say. 
So it's called snap, as in the photograph, take a snap. Uh, but also this severance, the snap that is the life of the immigrant when he or she moved beyond. This is all pre uh, Ryanair days when to leave I carried a freight um, with it. Um, but as we're now experiencing in 21st century Europe, um, floods of people trying to find home and succor and uh, a life from Syria and Afghanistan and uh, the African continent, um, in a way, it's the story of life. It's the story of humankind. Snap. Emigrant family leaving Derry, 1930s. If I had known, I would have kept this picture on the mantelpiece of each home we had. The two of them could hardly stand still. Her, shy as anything, and the young lad held fast to his daddy's hand. Our tickets were in the other. The day was cool enough. A mist settled, and the engines churned and churned. It felt as if we were on land, and the land on either side was distant, foreign. I couldn't believe we were going. The kids looked this way and that until the open sea. Nothing but the sea. And I thought my heart would break. <laughs>